H. Night Show, and our first uh, article is called The Argentina Mystery Light, Mysterious Light Over Arada. <clears throat> Argentina, a mysterious light over Arada. Past midnight on the last day of 2021, a resident of the town of Arada saw something in the skies. He never seen before, which drew his attention. Zonal Nietzsche's correspondent Tano spoke to Geronimo, the witness who described the event. While it is common for a number of uh, different uh, of a different phenomenon to be seen in direct relationship with UFO phenomena, it is nevertheless surprising when it comes to discussing the matter. Even more so, when it's described with an air of astonishment. I was getting ready to phone my mother, and that's why I stepped outside to speak calmly and wish her a happy new year. At that moment, a uh, fluorescent green light appeared, lighting up the sky and moving quickly from one side to the other, said the Arata resident. We were gathered at my brother's home near the town's avenue. Upon seeing that spectacle, I called out for my family, and they also witnessed it. It was startling to see this uh, light flying from one side to another, giving off a few sparks, he continued. I'm still astonished by what I saw. I've never seen anything similar. We all agreed it was a UFO, he concluded. And uh, let's see, then, uh, let's see, now for the next story. Uh, my website is lulu.com slash spotlight slash freighterus h and that's with fr that freighterus h has no spaces and no capitals now the next story okay uh astronomers watch red super giant star explode for the first time and a world first astronomers have the have had the opportunity to watch a super giant explode in real time in one of the most uh, destructive events in the known universe, the demise of a supergiant star in the form of a colossal explosion of cosmic proportions. And now, for the first time, astronomers have been given a front row seat to such an event happening in front of their eyes. The scientists uh, first began to observe the star, which is situated 120 million light years away in the G NGC. 5731 galaxy back in summer 2020 but we're surprised to discover a few months later that it had exploded by pulling together observations from multiple telescopes the researchers were able to build up a picture of the supernova from before it exploded in a full year afterwards this is a breakthrough in our understanding of what massive stars do moments before they die said study lead author Wynne Jacobson Gallon from the University of California, Berkeley. From the first time you watched a super giant uh, star explode, the team is now hoping to spot further examples to help them learn more about the supernova. It's like watching a ticking time bomb, said uh, study senior Rafael Marguti. We've never uh, confirmed such violent activity in a dying red supergiant star, where we see it produce such a luminous emission, then collapse and combust until now. Okay, uh, the next story is, okay, two UFO sightings with videos from commercial airplanes. Even during the pandemic shutdown, no groups spent more time at high altitudes looking out windows than airline pilots and their passengers yet 
UFO sightings by either group seem few and far between. Are they not seeing anything? That seems unlikely. Are they afraid of ridicule or in the case of the pilots reprimanding? That seems more the case, especially if they have no proof of cor corroborating witnesses. This makes two UFO sightings this week especially significant. One is by two pilots, one is by uh, two airline passengers. Both have videos of UFOs. Will they believe? Will they be believed? The quote is, I uh, was flying along 39,000 feet in an Airbus A320 somewhere over Georgia. Took out my phone to take photos of the beautiful Milky Way using the new iPhone 13 Pro Max. Trying to make a video of another aircraft flying just above us, opposite direction at 40,000 feet. So I was filming this aircraft fly over us. I noticed this V-shaped object appear. This uh, report comes from UFO Stalker website, which appears to have reposted it from the MUFON site and implies that the, the witness saw was uh, the witness was in the cockpit of an Air, Airbus uh, A320 passenger plane flying over Georgia on 1-3-2022 when the sighting occurred. The video of the sighting can be seen here and here. And unfortunately, there is no indication that the crew attempted to contact the other aircraft in their view at the time to determine if, if they also saw the UFO. The witness merely s uh, says, both Cap and I agreed that we would like to remain anonymous, and nothing was reported to the FAA or ETC. ETC is an air traffic control, and a call to it or the FAA would have required logging the sighting to in the newly approved uh, Pentagon database. Are pilots still afraid of reporting UFOs? The video is at night in poor quality, possibly due to the limitations of even the latest atmosphere smartphone cameras. Other than the, the quick cut to the con control panel, everything else in the video can be used for perspective. One commenter suggested that the, these are lights reflected from inside the cockpit or on its windows, but that pilots would uh, make that but what pilot would make that mistake at that point there there's no way to uh, possibly identify these lights over georgia i was flying from glasgow to london with my girlfriend we left glasgow airport around 6 a.m just before we prepared to land in catwick airport i saw the strange object i started to film it took some pictures of it it was uh Far away from the airplane. That's why you can see and see it very clear. It was roughly three to four miles away from our plane. It was hard to film it because you see it on video. The plane was getting ready to land. <clears throat> Marjol Sella saw her UFO out of the plane window on 1422 and managed to get it get it clear, but far away video of it. She gave the video uh, to Glasgow Live and claims her fellow passenger also saw and recorded it. Sella somehow uh, determined the UFO is four miles away and not a plane but a flying object in the skies that was not moving but hovering. What uh, do you think it's hovering at first and in the, the second and third glance it looked like another plane a rocket or a meteor. Glasgow Live did not appear to investigate the UFO event any further, but so there's no positive identification yet. However, kudos go to Marjol so for quickly getting a decent video and reporting to the to the media using a real name. It's only reports like these and follow-up investigations by the media or the government that the UFO can be identified. That is if the government really wants them to be identified. In the meantime, keep looking out the windows and keep up at uh, keep and up at the sky and keep your phone charged and ready.
Well, the next story is the dog man. Could the werewolf-like creature be a tulpa thought form? A few days ago, I was asked about one of my articles that concerned the controversial matter of the dog man phenomenon. Or what we may call the modern day equivalent of nothing less than a werewolf. The question was an interesting one. Could the dog men be tulpas? Well, such a thing certainly couldn't be dismissive. It's a mystery that's just that when enough people believe in something, the same something can stride out from our darkest imaginations and right into the heart of our own reality. The phenomenon of the tulpa has its origins in the ancient teachings of Buddhism and is a Tibetan term that roughly translates into English as manifestation. In essence, it is the process by which the human mind can allegedly bring some degree of alternative physical existence to an entity that is created solely within the depths of the imagination from within the dream state to, in other words, it is incredible as it may sound, each and every one of us may well possess the ability to, to give life to certain things. What does not... What, that don't, uh, to things that don't exist in the same way we do, that we may very well extend to the matters of the dogmen. Why do I say that? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because not only are the bizarre creatures in their appearances, they are also weird in their activities, and here is what I mean by that. <clears throat> the primary reason why I say that the dogmen might be, might be tulpas are several. Although strange wolf-like creatures, many that have the ability to walk, run on their back legs, hence the werewolf imagery, have been seen for centuries. They are growing in number. That is exactly what happened when the Tulpa version of the Slender Man surfaced, when more and more people believed it was real. And as a result, it did come to life, and more and more Slender Men were seen. There's also the fact that the Dogmen appear on so many occasions crossing roads at crossroads and although they terrify people they never actually slice them into pieces or kill them it's like a uh, loop going over and over again what's even more significant is this is there's a very important case that mixes the tulpa puzzle with a supernatural werewolf it's a case not to be dismissed and it's all revolves around a woman named violet mary Furf. Born in North Wales in 1890, she's better, far better known within occult circles as Dion Fortune, a woman who at a young age immersed herself in the world's supernatural. The <coughs> work of renowned neurologist Sigmund Freud's tale of the legendary, legendary land of Atlantis, which he had uh, several extraordinary graphic visions, in ceremonial, some ceremonial magic. She also claimed a rare contact with so-called Ascended Masters, powerful beings who were once human, but who, over numerous reincarnations, became something far more than human, and who dwell in higher dimensions with those of, of our 3D world. Birch also claimed that a contact with the mysterious and ancient wizard Merlin was authoring for and legend. She went on to write numerous books, including Through the Gates of Death, The Aspects of Occultism, Sane Occultism, and Psychic Self-Defense, the latter being undoubtedly her most well-known and influential title. It was in the pages of this particular book that Fortune told an astonishing story, one that may very well go to the heart of how and why the Slenderman has successfully achieved a strange form of reality said the barriers of the internet <laughs> and the matter of how on one occasion she succeeded in creating a tulpa as fortune said the artificial elemental is constructed by forming a clear-cut image in the imagination of the creature it is intended to create consoling with something of the corresponding aspect of one's being uh another thing just to cut off real quick i don't recommend any of this kind of new age stuff this this kind of occultism is in, in the realities of demons and really the reality is this is what i think people are seeing as demons 
you know, but I cover the story as it's written. I'll read it as it's written. Um, Fly, I'll tell you that that a lot of the stuff you're reading is very, very bad stuff. I mean, you you shouldn't you shouldn't be getting involved with any of that. Okay, so you know she's talking about me idols here and this woman you know this is this is this is not good the creatures of ten and create and solving it with something of a corresponding aspect of one's own being and then evoke it into appropriate natural force this method can be used for good as well as evil I think it's all evil and guardian angels are formed in this way no they aren't it is said that dying women anxious concerning the welfare of their children frequently form them consciously i don't never heard of that it was at a, an unspecified time in late 1928 when diane fortune created her very own tulpa which was filled with malevolence oh geez it was filled with malevolence and again, as like I said, you just you you just drawing demons when I mean, you do these kinds of things. Trust me. Something which was almost certainly dictated by the fact that at the same time the question of Fortune's own mind was in a distinctly negative and anger-filled state of flux. On the afternoon day in question, Fortune was lying on her bed, brooding. And fuming deeply on how just recently she said she received serious injury from someone who at considerable cost to myself I had uh, interestingly helped. And I was slowly tempted to retaliate. She certainly did that. And the way it describes, <laughs> the way uh, Fortune describes things, it sounds as if while still on the bed, she did not fall completely asleep but was plunged in distinctly into an altered state of sleep meets wakefulness. It was a state which allowed her to create a mind a mind monster that leapt out of her dark and swirling imagination with truly incredible speed and ease. In that same alter state, recall the same Nordic mist rose before me, I thought of Fenris, a wolf horror of the north. Fenris, a... Uh, centuries-old Scandinavian supernatural beast was a wolf of paranormal proportion. This is basically, this is getting into demonology, pretty much. One that had perhaps far more a werewolf than it was a regular wolf, at least in terms of its sometimes human-like appearance than Nordic lore. It was said to have been the terrifying offspring of the Nordic gods Loki and Angra Boda, and the sibling of the serpent god Jurzamangand and the underworld goddess Hell. Mere sick and sad as a thing of Fenris in her state and sleep, the beast was put in an appearance. In fact, it's materialized right next to her on the bed. The appearance of Fenris coincided immediately with that, described as a curious drawing out, drawing out sensation from my solar plexus. She went on to describe the creature as a well-materialized ectoplasmic form, it was gray and colorless and had weight. <clears throat> if you are wondering who or what Fenris is, take a note of the words of the website Norse Mythology from Smart People. We are told Fenris is an old Norse, uh, an old Norse Fenris, the most infamous of the main wolves in Norse mythology. His importance of the pre Christian Scandinavians is demonstrated by his uh, being depicted by numerous surviving runestones, not to mention his uh, ubiquity to Old Norse literary sources. This is the son of the god Loki and the giantess Angra Boda, Boa, which makes him the, bro the brother of the serpent Jurgamandam and the underworld god of hell. That the monstrous wolf had noticeably weight, says the Tolpas, are not mere ethereal specters, but entities which, under a certain circumstances, display a fair degree of physicality at the at the time. Fortune had no real meaningful understanding of the nature of, of or concept of thought forms and tulpas. 
It was only after her own experience that she chose to look into the matter to a deep level, and to what almost an obsessive degree. It's notable, though, that she managed to create such a degree, perfect sample of the phenomenon, all without knowing how she achieved it, which may very well have a major bearing on why so many people today are seeing the dog man, but without fully understanding how in such a situation could ever be, people are manifesting the dog man. I think that the demonic entity manifesting, uh, creating shape-shifting into these kind of things. People are manifesting the dog man, but as fortune experiences shows, you hardly need to be an expert to cause an imagination to become reality. Could that be the case with the dog man? Now that it was a grown, now that it has a grown phone, maybe. Okay. Well, that's it for today. There'll be uh, a new episode every night. Thank you and have a great night.